there is a big twist in the crisis uh, part also, you can call it, uh, between the Fekafoot and the sports ministry in Cameroon. And we'll be telling you uh, all of what has panned out uh, in the last few days of this week. And of course, in Ghana, uh, Otoado has uh, decided to take a very drastic decision that will impact the future of football in that country. Welcome to Sports Africa. This is where we discuss all things football, another biggest football, uh, sporting stories on the continent. My name is Ashali Femi. It's going to be another awesome time on the show today. It's, thank God it's Friday. Of course, in the next two days, you have uh, time to rest. James Aguirre joins me. And today we'll be doing all of this together with you, wherever you are joining us from. James, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Femi. Uh, happy to be on uh, today's edition. All right. Okay, so let's take us through our regular roundup on Sports Africa. Of course, we'll be talking about the continental roundup. Then we move to the big talking points where we we'll discuss issues raised uh, in the roundup. And of course, uh, after in diaspora today, we'll be going to, your guests will be as good as me. We'll be going to Atlanta to discuss about Super Eagles forward Ademel Lukman. And today, and the big match uh, for the weekend, we'll be going to the Ligon in Algeria. That is what they call their elite football league right there in the North African country. So once again, you are welcome. Please don't, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That is the uh, the support that we please solicit from you. Please do not just watch our videos. Please support, subscribe, support us by subscribing uh, to our, our channel. And we've said it many times, please, the door is open. Whatever you think we can do right here to improve our delivery, please put it in the comment section. We read those comments and of course, we will certainly, certainly affect whatever changes that you want us to uh, implement right here. Okay, let's get started. Of course, the last has not been heard about the crisis working Cameroon football. During the week, the Fekka Foot uh, dragged the sports ministry, you know, powered, some people say powered uh, by the Cameroonian government of Paul Bia uh, to the biggest court in Cameroon, the court that uh, arbitrate on sports matters. And we'll be letting you know, uh, you know, into what uh, the court has decided to do. And of course, in Ghana, Otwado has decided, yeah, has decided to build the Black Stars, the new Black Stars team around the young players. So he, he said he would take a decision that will reduce the number of games that the senior players are participating. So today we'll be looking at the impact of that decision. Remember, the 2020 World Cup qualifiers uh, resume in June 6 and 7. Uh, next month. So we'll be looking at all of this uh, together. And today we'll be going to Algeria. Remember, Ons Jabra, she has announced her retirement from tennis. Yeah, the best, she's been the best uh, female tennis uh, uh, that's come out of uh, Africa. We'll be looking at um, all of those. Uh, James, uh, let's get started. Uh, of course, you know, last week uh, on Monday, yeah, uh, we talked about um, the, the, the Cameroon situation. And at this time, um, track of food. Uh, dragged um, the sports ministry, so to say, uh, to the uh, conciliation and arbitration chamber of the Cameroon National Olympic Committee uh, to mediate, so to say, in what's been going on. The initial case filed before uh, the committee by Fekka Foot included McBride, you know, and uh, the two assistants he brought, as well as the other Cameroonian coaches who are touching, including Oman Biyi. Now, then later, the Fekka Foot amended its case before the committee it removed McBride and his two foreign assistants. Now, it seems Fekka Foot wants the committee to remove all the assistants, all the local assistants attacked to McBride. And that is the case before uh, the court right now. James, this is certainly, certainly horrible because we have uh, about two weeks plus now uh, to uh, those uh, very, very difficult walk up qualifier for Cameroon. And, this is still happening. And I can tell you that we have not heard the last of this. Well, Femi, it's like things are getting messier and messier by the day. And there's, like, there's, no, there's no solution in sight. Um, we're just dragging each other. And it's it become so muddy, so messy. And I, I don't know. Uh, maybe let's wait and see what will happen since they've taken it to the highest body. The highest court body in Cameroon. So maybe by the time they come up with their verdict, at least the, the, the matter will rest. Because um, for me, the way it's going, uh, Cameroon, I don't know. You know, it's just like two two um, captains on the, on the ship. You know? <laughs> Nobody wants to take order from anybody. That's you know yeah, that. That's what it is. Yeah. Now, as it is, um, the, the Fekka foot is under 
under the sports ministry. We know that. But you know, when it comes to football matters, I mean, there's certain power that the pecker foot should wield. But it's like uh, uh, it's superior somewhere who is calling the shots. So it's kind of tied down because we also it in the appointment of a coach. They also have come out to distance themselves from the from McBride, you know. Now this is the issue of assistance. You know, they're just coming to all kinds of things now. And for me, at the end of the day, it's the players that will suffer it, you know, because those are the top, like they don't even care. You know, because I mean you have a World Cup qualifier so close. And I remember in our previous uh, edition, I used to always point out their format the last half when it was it was horrible. You know, so you expect a serious um, setup to say, okay, with what happened at the last Afcon and uh, forging the way forward, this and this should be in place. But now you have power. People are just, it's about power now. Uh, you know, everybody just trying to flex their power. You know, remember what happened with uh, Samueto and some football unions. Now, so for me, I don't know. It's let, Let's just wait and see what the, the what will come out from the from the um, court, you know, but semi okay. looking good. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, one of the things that actually uh, breaks my heart about this is, is that when you have the likes of a Cameroon football legend, Oman B, you know, having a case about him being taken to uh, the the highest sports committee uh, in Cameroon, you know, um, so, so what uh, Samuel Eto and Fekafoot are requesting is for the court to remove all the indigenous coaches attached to McBride and um, his other two foreign assistants. And James, another issue, another development is that it is the second time that FIFA uh, will be removing McBride's picture, you know, on his profile on their website. Uh, or no, they have pictures of uh, national team coaches of all the member member countries. Uh, is it, initially it was removed. Now they put it back. Now it has been removed. And what you have there right now is uh, the picture of um, uh, John Baptiste Bissek, who is the female uh, the coach of the uh, Indomitable Lionesses. So it is getting messy and messy, like you said, and it, it appears to me like a head-on collision between uh, the Fekker Foot and, uh, of course, the Ministry of Sports. That's why you put it, because the Cameroon, the Cameroon government is actually operating, doing all of this, causing panic, causing tension in Cameroon football through uh, the Ministry of Sports. And what these guys do not really think of is uh, uh, the legacy, the posterity, because in the next 10, 20 years, that is what uh, they will certainly be uh, remembered for. We get our fingers crossed as far as this is concerned. The World Cup qualifier is almost here. We expect that by next week, all the leagues across Europe will have been concluded and the players will be uh, uh, reporting to camp, certainly. Uh, James, let's take a trip to Ghana now. Before we go to Ghana, of course, Super Eagles coach, uh, Finiji George has been, you know, he ended his uh, three-day media tour yesterday and he spoke about a wide range of issues regarding some to his personal life where we talk about the fact that his family is here to find closure over the death of his younger brother, George, who was uh, killed in 1995. And he related that to uh, the sad happening to Atijani uh, Babangi who lost his uh, younger brother and his son in that uh, ghastly car crash along the Cardinal Zaria Road. So we pray that God uh, we give all of them the fortitude to uh, bear this loss. So the world is waiting, watching Finiti George to see what he's going to do against South Africa uh, on June 7 at the Goswell Akwabio International Stadium in Ujo. James, let's take a trip to Ghana now, just uh, close by here. Now, let's talk about Ado. According to a uh, report in Ghana, uh, Ado has uh, decided to, uh, I don't know, some people are saying it is like cut, cutting loose senior players from uh, from the, uh, the Black Stars. Now, they said he had a meeting with um, Thomas Pate, DDIU, and of course, um, Daniel Amate, that his decision going forward is to reduce uh, the, re the, the reliance on senior players and the Black Stars. He has decided to build his team around young players. Uh, we wouldn't understand the reason for that uh, decision. Uh, we wouldn't know, honestly, uh, except Ado comes out himself to speak. And I'm sure during uh, the press conference for uh, Ghana's uh, 2026 World Cup qualify against Mali as Central African Republic, of course, Otoado will be able to clarify some of these issues because, uh, uh, you know, his attention wants to, will be shifting to the likes of Mamed Kudus and Ernesto Noama uh, uh, and the young guys. Of course, you also have uh, the Bomos uh, striker, uh, Antoine Semenya. So he will want to build uh, the team around these guys who uh, he thinks they are the future of uh, 
uh, of the Black Stars. Okay, let's get to, okay, still on this matter before I even move to the issue of uh, Ons Jabbar. Of course, sadly, we, we couldn't collect any more to James because of his experiencing a very, very uh, terrible network uh, issue right there. Uh, we have uh, ace journalist, I'm talking about uh, uh, Atapoku. He has told um, Otoado that he should do away, do away with all of these senior guys in the Black Stars because the mentality is that they believe that they had a problem uh, uh, why and why the Black Stars have not been able to achieve anything in the past year. And of course, you have the likes of uh, Coach uh, Christopher Nimli also telling uh, um, Otoado that his decision is uh, welcomed by other coaches in Ghana. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Ons Jabra. I tell you, 30 year old uh, this week, she has so much, which is 10. She was inspired by this Tunisian, and uh, she announced that uh, she's expecting a uh, first child with her husband, Karim uh, Kamun. So she's uh, saying she has, has said a goodbye uh, to 10. She would miss her so much. Uh, in 2020, she became the first, first African, uh, as a matter of fact first African, first player from uh, North Africa uh, to reach, of course, the quarterfinal of a Grand Slam yeah, in 2020. So she has made this trip for herself and we wish her all uh, the very, very, the very best right here. So there, of course, there are avalanche of response, uh, responses from our colleagues in the tennis world, including Serena Williams. I will wish her uh, all the best for, his, for uh, the future. So Ons Jabba said she is looking ahead to the latest challenge, which is a mother who she's expecting a child with her husband. Now, let's go on a very, this very, 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 we'll still try to reconnect with James. If we uh, couldn't, of course, we'll continue with the show. We'll be taking you to a start of the week. And like I told you earlier, your guest is as good as mine. I'll be going to Atalanta. Adimola Lukman is the name on the lips of everyone across the world. We'll be back. Please stay with us. Yeah, welcome back. It's still Sport Africa. Unfortunately, we still uh, couldn't connect to James, but of course, the show has to go on. Uh, like, of course, uh, on Wednesday, Adimala Lukman delivered a superb, excellent uh, 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 delivery right here at the Aviva Stadium uh, in Dublin, uh, where his Atrick aided uh, Atalanta to their first ever European title. And he ended the club's 61 year wait for. Um, a trophy um, at the biggest stage of all uh, is shown brightly right there. And you have a lot of uh, uh, club executives who were at that stadium uh, in Ireland to watch that game. We saw the likes of Deco, we saw the likes of Rakiki. They were there to watch uh, uh, that game. And um, uh, according to the reports, they were stunned by the performance of Ademola Lokma. So possibly this uh, summer, we'll be hearing some news regarding Ademola Lokma leaving at uh, the Gavi Stadium in Atalanta. Um, and what has been most inspiring about the story of Adem Lakuma is how he started his struggles before now. You know, he started his career at a Chelsea Athletic, went to Everton, then RB Leipzig signed him. He didn't do well in Germany. He was loaned out. He was loaned out to Fulham. From Fulham, he was loaned to uh, Leicester City. When everybody thought Leicester City uh, were kind of giving him a, a permanent deal, uh, they rather sent him back to RB Leipzig, and RB Leipzig gave him just one season uh, to prove himself because he remember he had been on loan in the two previous seasons. That was when Atalanta came calling, and uh, a lot of people were like, "Your style of play, you know, suits the Premier League, and of course even the La Liga uh, more than going to Syria." And in his first season in Syria, he scored 15 goals, 15 goals, and uh, already this season he has 15 goals, so he has equaled um, his goal all for the. 2022-2023 a season, and now he has aided Atlanta to their first ever, first ever um, European title. Great one for Ademola Lukman. Someone said, Peter Crouch, as a matter of fact, said Atlanta fans will never, never forget the name of Ademola Lukman. So he is our star of the week, right? So on Monday, we'll be looking at a number of uh, African players who are currently being touted for uh, the Player of the Year Award by the end of the year. I wouldn't know whether you agree with it, but on Monday, that would be our focus, right? We'll be giving you the stats of each of these six players and what you think about their performance this season. Remember, the new season will be kicking off in August. So it's, it's, it's not quite far from here. So we'll be keeping our 
tabs on the performance of these players, as well as what they will do for their country in the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Uh, that will be uh, getting on that way once again next month. Okay, our match, big match of the week, it will be going to Algeria. It's between JSK, uh, I believe, versus uh, uh, MC Algeria. MC Algeria, they are running away already with the title in, in, in Tunisia's league on. Yeah, uh, they have a 14 point lead ahead of uh, uh, Belus Dad, who is second on, on, on the log. Yeah, you can see it's 27 games played already, but you can't just say. So between these two, uh, giant uh, is first versus seventh. Yeah, yes, I believe they are seventh on uh, on 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 the log. Why MC Oja they are first, and they have MC Oja are leading yes, I believe by twenty four points. So it will take only a miracle for MC Oja not to win uh, the title this season. I quickly I give you the head to head start going into this game uh, this weekend. MC Oja have won ten games uh, in, uh, between these two, and they've scored a total of thirty goals. They've won 10 games and scored a total of 30 goals. That is about uh, three goals per average per game. While JS Kabili have won 15. They've won 15 and they scored a total of 45 goals. And these two teams have drawn 14. So they have a rich history uh, between them. But if you look at it, JS Kabili is favored by this head to head because they won 15 matches uh, against them. Um, MC Odia's 10. But I tell you, they have 24 points between them. So would this say yes, Kabili are actually living on past glory? I wouldn't know, but we will we, 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 this weekend. We'll wait this weekend uh, to see how these two teams will get down in the uh, Tunisian uh, league. On. Sadly, this is where we have to end the show today. So sorry, apologies that we couldn't reconnect with James. It's uh, due to some of these issues. Uh, you can't really tell and you can't really have uh, a control over them. But Monday, on Monday, by God's grace, we'll be back with um, a better, better um, a package for you. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Try and rest and take everything easy. I remain a Shalula Femi Card. We'll see you all on Monday. Bye for now.